And, um, how did you get into the insulation business? Um, I was looking for a job one day and I just opened up the yellow pages and saw an insulation company and uh, called them up and they hired me. Was that Gale or was it a different company? It was a different company in California. And so how long have you been doing insulation? I've been in this industry for 33 years. And um, what type of education or training did you need to learn what you need to know for your job? I went to uh, Advanced Building Science out of Raleigh-Durham uh, and spent uh, quite a bit of time understanding thermal boundaries and how the homes work and how the homes fail. And when I went to Advanced Building Science School, I had a chip on my shoulder and I said, these people don't teach me anything. And when I came out of that class, I said, oh my gosh, we have been insulating homes the wrong way all these years. And I came back into Gainesville and uh, we changed the way we insulate homes. How did you, what type of things did you implement to change from before well, to now? We, we eliminated uh, vapor barriers uh, on the inside of the homes because our moisture plane in Florida is to the exterior. So we were putting vapor barriers to the interior and we were trapping moisture in the cavities of the walls that were creating mold and mildew. So now that we take the vapor barrier out of the interior side, the actual wall cavity can breathe and dry out. And uh, Scoble Homes uses fiberglass blown insulation. Can you tell us a little bit about what that's made of and what some of the advantages are to it's using It's recycled uh, glass is what it is. And at the manufacturer's plant, what they do is they, they break it down, they melt it down, and then they spin it into a fiber. And what it is is, you know, they say R value. What does R stand for? It stands for resistance. The higher the R value, the greater the resistance. So if you go from an R19 to an R38, you have more resistance. High pressure seeks low pressure. Warm air is attracted to cold air. What's your favorite part about your job? Sales. Why? It's fun to help people out. Uh, I get calls all the time that says, hey, I have a bedroom that won't cool down. And most of my competitors say, well, just add more insulation to it. Well, that's not always the case. You have to look at the house as a system. If one part of the system fails, the whole house fails. So if you go into a bedroom that does not heat and cool, it could be a number of things. It could be wrong size ductwork. It could be 70, 80 percent glass to floor ratio facing westerly. That will affect how the thermal performance of the house goes. I go to a lot of homes that have troubles like that and find out it's not necessarily the insulation. It's, it's either the ductwork or it's the glass area. So I can fix those problems and that makes me feel good. And um, how many days does it take to insulate a house this size? This size, we're probably looking at two to three days. And how many homes do you insulate in Gainesville? Oh, thousands and thousands. A year? Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. Cool. Well, keep up the good work and thank you for your time. You're very welcome. I guess the question is what is insulation used for and why do we do it? The idea is we want to keep the house at a comfortable temperature. So during the winter we want it warm and during the summer we want to keep it cool. Um, so part of the process is air conditioning, which is another thing you guys went over. But another big part is insulation, which is basically putting a blanket around the house. It's um, putting stuff in the walls so it keeps the warm air in or the cool air in depending on the season. So what we do is, these are the interior walls. These walls don't get any insulation because the temperature is usually the same on both sides of the wall. But on the exterior walls, it's very important that we fill this cavity with insulation. And at Scoville Homes, we use two by six construction, so you can actually fill more insulation inside the wall. And we fill the entire cavity and we use a blown product so it gets all the crevices. So it's almost like a, uh, almost like a fluffy foam. Um, that fills the entire wall. And um, it is fiberglass though, and it goes to an R23 value, which is the rating for insulation. And, um, and basically, once the insulation is filled in the walls, it acts as a blanket, like all the way up the wall, to keep the house the correct temperature. And then the other critical area is the attic. So over the, these are trusses, so over the garage, if you look over there where the garage is, you'll need to insulate um, insulate over the garage because there's living space above, but also when you're upstairs, 
um, and you look into the trusses, see that's the garage. Basically in this area, wherever there's a living space above the garage, you need to insulate above it. So that way the warm air, if you've ever been in your garage, you know it's warm in there. So the warm air, you know, rises, you don't want it to make the, the bedrooms above the garage warm. And if you want, we'll come upstairs and look at the attic roof trusses, which is... Now, there's different types of insulation that you can use, right? The fiberglass is not the only product to insulate the walls? Yeah, that's right. There's, there's multiple types. There's, fiberglass is probably the most popular product. And there's two main forms that, that are used by fiberglass. Um, probably the most popular, actually not probably, definitely the most popular product used around the country is a bat fiberglass, which is kind of, it has paper on the back of it and has fiberglass attached to the front. And basically you can buy it at a hardware store and it's something you just stick on the walls. We don't use that product because we use an upgraded product. It's a blown fiberglass. It's the same type of product, but it, it's the consistency of it's different and it doesn't come in rolls with paper on the back. But the idea of the blown is it fills up the entire wall cavity. Um, and they actually put rulers so you can make sure they blow it to the right yeah, amount. Yeah, that's in the attic. And now that we're up here, we can take a look at it. But this is the attic space and you can see the, these are the trusses. So basically against the bottom of the truss, once the ceiling's in, they're gonna fill all of this area with insulation. And the areas that are difficult to get to, they'll fill now. But the idea is they want the attic, I don't know if you guys have ever been in your attic, probably your parents have, but it's really hot up there. We wanna make sure we have that blanket over the house as well as in the walls. So think of it as a blanket when you're asleep at night. It keeps you warm because it keeps your body heat in. Well, this insulation does the same thing for the house. It keeps the heat or the cool in the house. Um, and it works both ways for if it's cool or it's warm. And as for the different types of insulation, they make cellulose, which is like shredded up newspaper with treatment in it, which is kind of cool. You can actually see the, the uh, writing on the newspaper in cellulose. And then we use fiberglass, um, which is the other product, which we use a blown product, like we said. There's and that's recycled as well, right? That's recycled glass. The other one's recycled newspaper. So both insulation products are recycled. And insulation is a real key to having a very energy efficient home. Um, so your utility bills are lower and it doesn't hurt the environment. Are engineers the type of people who create these different methods of insulation? Yeah, engineers are involved in multiple steps. They usually create the materials. So they'll create the fiberglass or create the cellulose and figure out how to do it. And then they'll actually bring it to factories that actually make the product. So the engineers will figure out how to do it, write the reports on it, kind of figure out what new products are going to come out. They'll come up with new products. And then once the products are figured out, and there's almost like a, a uh, instruction list of what to do, almost like a, uh, a recipe for a, um, for a meal. They'll come, the engineers will come up with a recipe of how to make the insulation. of people that collaborate together to get the product installed in the house. And it includes both the engineer figuring out how to work the product, it involves the people manufacturing the product, and then it also involves people delivering the product and installing the product. So you can see just there, there's a variety of people, and at each level, there's also a group that works together.